Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Tutorial. Here we're covering Unit 4, Work and Energy. The section is 4.L, The Sign of Work. Here's the scenario. Two identical track have similar frictions are shown in the diagram. Identical blocks 1 and 2 are each set on the leftmost part of the track and given an initial speed. V not. Block 1 goes up the track and block 2 goes down the track. As shown, block 1 comes to a stop after traveling a length of L1 and block 2 travels a distance of L2 before coming to rest. Predict. If the students perform this experiment, which block would travel further on its track before coming to rest? Explain your answer in terms of energy transform. Well, my prediction would be that it is going to go L2 is going to go um, more further. And here's my reason why. The block will travel further, will have more kinetic energy. And I know that work is equal to force times distance, which is also equal to the change in kinetic energy. So I can just set my FD equals to 1 half mv squared minus mgh. Here I assume that all the initials, um, the initial kinetic energy and the initial potential energy were zero in both cases. I can cancel out distance, the masses, and the height because they're the same for both blocks. I'm just comparing them. Okay, so the only thing that changes is actually the force and the velocity. I notice that here the velocity of the object depends on the net force. I can say that L1 has a lower F net because the force of gravity is in the opposite direction of the ramp, where L2 will have a higher F net because the force of gravity is in the same direction as the ramp. In the L2 situation, gravity is actually helping the block slide down the ramp by giving the block energy. As a result, L2 will go further down because it has more energy being put into the block from gravity assisting it. Now we look at part two. They did an experiment and they have this data. Does this data agree with your conclusion that you made in part one? The third trial actually has an outlier, the 11.84. So if you remove that data set, um, because the 11.84 falls outside of the um, average values here, the average values is around 0 0.8, and that is a large degree away from it. If we take that value out, you could see that L2 does be have a um, larger L2 than L1. So we can just ignore that. So does the experimental data agree with it? And we would say, yes, it does agree. Now, we want to derive an equation for L1 for this scenario and an equation for L2. All right. This is going to take a long while. I'm not going to write the commentary. I'm just going to read the commentary to you. Okay. So the first thing is you want to start with uh, the work equation. So I'm going to have here work is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. The work version that I'm going to use is F net times distance cosine theta. The reason why is because there's an angle here. That's going to be equal to delta x. Next part, I have to figure out what my F net is. So I have to do Newton's um, third, uh, second law for this situation. I saw that the F net in this situation is going to be um, made up of um, certain forces. I drew the force for it 
we would see that force of gravity does go down so you have to break it up in, into its vertical and horizontal part its horizontal part here is fg sine theta going to up the ramp and down the ramp would be force of friction remember force of friction is always in the opposite direction of the velocity so here we saw that the velocity is going up the ramp so force of friction has to go down the ramp so you can make this substitution fg sine theta minus uh, force of friction would be the th that and we have d cosine theta equals to delta x Next, uh, we want to take a look at the d cosine term. The d cosine term. All right. So the d here is going to be L1 because that is the distance traveled. And notice that the angle here is going to be 180 degrees. So you can write L1 cosine of 180. Bring everything else down. That's how that should look like. Force of friction equals to. There you go. Now things can sort of simplify. Right. Um, I can pull out a negative if I want here. And I have FG minus, yep, FG minus um, MG sine theta, all right? Then you have cosine of 80 degrees goes away, or it becomes 1. And this equals to delta K, right? Delta K is just 1 half mv squared and this is v minus one half mv squared this is not but notice that this term will go to uh, zero so this is what you have left is a that on the left hand side for some friction uh, one okay if you distribute it to the uh, if you subtract the if you distribute the negatives to the other side all right hold on so here you have mu m g cosine well here let me show you this so force of friction force of friction in of itself becomes remember this is mu n Okay, but n in this case it's just fg sine theta, so it's fg force mg sine um, cosine theta. All right? Distribute the negative inside, so you should have this now. Good. That's in a parentheses. Um, L one equals to one half mv squared okay remember this goes to zero i just made the substitution for force of friction at this point now you want to solve for l1 so we have l1 here this is going to be equal to we know this is as one half mv squared divided by this whole junk okay and then we can simplify because a lot of the terms cancel. So notice all the masses canceled. Okay, all the masses canceled. What you have left is a um, a V squared. Oh. oh, sorry. So this was wrong. So this doesn't go, but this doesn't go to zero. The square doesn't go to zero. Hold on. So one half mv squared. This goes to zero. The final goes to zero. Yeah. Because it's at rest at the end. At the end. Okay, remember it goes to the top, then stops. So it's the final velocity that went 
to zero. So this was zero here. Okay. So we have the one half right here. Okay. V squared on bottom, you have mu uh, G cosine theta plus um, G sine theta. Oh my gosh, both of these, both of these have G's. So let me just pull it out. I could factor it out. So it becomes G. Oh, this is a one half. So give me a second. I can just pull it out as well. So this can just become one half G parentheses mu cosine theta plus sine theta. All right, let's see if that makes sense. Uh, force of friction is force of gravity and cosine and sine here it goes up. Okay, yep, that works. All right, so this would be what L1 would be. Okay, now let's do it for L2, right? Rather than go through this whole process again for L2, I'm just going to look at the equation and do it, all right? So here's the difference. Whoops, sorry. The only difference for L2 is that L2 is going to go down the ramp. So the fact that it goes down the ramp, do you see the sign? It's no longer an addition. It's now a subtraction. Okay because it goes down so because let's see this is now the fg sine theta term right so if we're going to take going up for this value to be positive this has to be negative or if you do the other way right one has to be positive the other one has to be negative all right so there you go rather than go through the whole process again i can just look at this equation and see that it goes down so the only thing that changes is the sine in front of the sine theta all right now we want to say explain how your answer for part b supports your result that you got so remember l1's average is lower than l2's average in part two once the outlier in trial three has been removed you should see it right here I can bring it down here to show you. Okay, the new average, if you want to compute it, when this disappears, right, we would see that the L2, let me just do the calculation for you. All right, so I just did the average. I add them and I divide by four because there's four trials. Okay, so notice that the L1's average is smaller than the L2's average. All right, let's see if that makes sense. Well, notice that the this matches up with the equation because the f net on bottom is made out of mu cosine theta plus sine theta so if this is large so let's say the bottom here is a very like right here if this is large okay by going up l1 has to go down right if the bottom here is small by going down right it's a small value goes down l2 has to go up okay the f net here you could see this as f net you can say that the length in this situation has an inverse relationship with the net force okay the larger the net force the smaller the length the smaller the length, uh, the smaller the net force, the larger the length. All right. So my reasoning here is actually wrong. This is actually wrong. My reasoning here is wrong. Okay. Because this deviation just proved my statement for this to be wrong. I analyze it correctly by saying that the force of gravity does uh, push it down more, but notice 
right? It does push it down more, okay? But yeah, L2 is L2 only gets larger when the F net gets smaller, and the F net is referred to this bottom part. Wow. Well, it's really not F net. It's really not F net. It's a result of mu cosine theta minus sine theta. It's not really F net. So, yeah. So there you go. Um, that is 4.0.